An entitled Karen claims to be the former owner of my truck and demands I give it back to her. She freaks out and calls the police when I refuse. Here's what happened. Subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. The state I live in has crazy entitled people pretty much everywhere. So this doesn't surprise me at all, since I've seen it enough times in my life to become indifferent to it. But it's amusing to talk about it. So I'll tell it here, though the first part isn't so amusing. In 2020, I lost my home in a wildfire and was only left with whatever I could pack up and afford focus during the evacuation. I was renting a basement apartment in a country house, and most of my stuff went up in flames. I realized that my car may get good gas mileage, but it's not going to hold a lot of stuff, or tow anything. My landlord evacuated his family in a big GMC truck with a fifth-wheel trailer. He had everything he needed from emergency food storage to backup vehicles. His wife drove another truck fully loaded with a trailer full of their stuff. They had everything they needed to survive and more. That made me realize that I needed to be better prepared. I had to couch surf for a while, and I could never stay in one place for long because I was a guest and not a tenant. So I ended up living out of a tent in a field with several other people who'd also lost their homes to the fire. It was like a tent village set up by a local charity. The shelters were beyond full, and it's a warm climate. So tents were the next best way to go considering the situation at the time. I managed to get a used but decent sized tent and basically furnished it like a tiny apartment with a cot, small table, and some chairs. I even housed a poker night in it a few times, though I tried to make sure I didn't leave anything worth stealing in it when I went to work. I was still going to work almost every day and even volunteering for extra shifts. I was saving money since I wasn't paying rent living the tent life, and I made up my mind to keep saving to one day buy a truck of my own. Because if this situation with the wildfires or some other disaster ever happened again, I need to be better prepared. Move on to just a few months ago. I put down over a year's worth of savings to buy a used Chevy Silverado 1500 with a canopy already on it. It's got a few dents and a big diagonal stretch across the hood. And the paint is a bit weather-worn. But so what? It had a good bit less, less than 100,000 miles on it. And a list of recent repairs that included a new radiator. I'd spent a year living as cheaply as possible to save as much as possible. I wanted a truck and a camp trailer in case the fires ever come back. Some people have tried to call me a hoarder for picking up stuff off the side of the road and using it, but I don't keep all that stuff in my apartment. In fact, I keep almost minimal furniture. Some remark that my apartment looks like it was just moved into, as I still keep some of my stuff packed in boxes. I want to be able to pack and leave fast if I have to, especially since the world only seems to be getting worse right now. I bought the truck in, ironically, Silver Silverado. I bought it off a man who looked to be in his 50s that said he has a bad back and can't use it anymore. And he gave me a steal of a deal when I came to get it by dropping the price by $1,000 because he felt I was clearly in love with it. And I'm very happy with the truck. She drives like a dream. A big, heavy dream, but still a dream. And she was clearly underdriven by the previous owner, as it's still not at 100,000 miles. I still kept my old Ford Focus, though. That way my fuel costs won't skyrocket. Now, let's go to what happened a few weeks after I bought the truck. I was out in the same general area I bought the truck in to look at a used camp trailer that I was possibly interested in buying. But it ended up being in such bad shape that I turned it down because it was beyond my skills to repair. Before leaving the town, I stopped to eat at a local diner. And as I was leaving after having dinner, I noticed a woman who looked to be somewhere in her 40s looking over my truck. I asked the lady what she was doing poking around my truck, and she gave me a side glare while demanding to know where I got it. I said I just bought it a few weeks prior. She rushed up to me and said I didn't buy it. I stole it. I told her, no, I purchased it from the title owner, so that makes it mine. The lady then rifled through her purse to pull out a smartphone and scrolled through it, and then she showed a photo of a truck in it. I looked at the truck in the picture, and I'll be a monkey's uncle, it was the same truck. The license plate and scratch on the hood were clearly visible, and there was also a man in the photo, the same guy who sold me the truck. When I acknowledged this, the crazy lady started yelling, See? See? And then demanded I return it to her. She held out her hand for the keys and kept saying, Give it back. I told her I bought the Silverado fair and square off the guy in the photo, and that it is my truck now. But she didn't let up. She went and sat on my bumper and called the police. She was heavily exaggerating while talking to the operator, or dispatcher, or whatever they call the person on the line when you call 911. I'm not sure. She refused to get off my truck, so I decided to just wait it out for police to show up. When police got there, I stayed completely calm. But the crazy lady went off and started working up tears, 
and saying that her truck went missing some time ago and she finally found it. Then she demanded they arrest me for Grand Theft Auto and get her truck back. I just calmly unlocked the doors, got my insurance card, registration, and license to hand to one of the officers. I told them to just check my documents and they'd see I'm the legal owner. But the crazy lady did not stop. She tried to run to the door of the truck I'd opened, but I relocked it before I shut it. And she tried repeatedly to pull on the handle while telling the police to just arrest me already. One of the officers calmed the lady down while the other ran my information. He came back after a few minutes and said everything checks out. The crazy lady looked a British word I like to use that I think I can best describe the moment. Gobsmacked. She said that it can't be and demanded the police check again, then pulled out her phone to show more pictures of the truck. I pointed out that the man in one of the photos was the one who sold the truck to me, and I have no idea what relation the crazy lady is to him, but he is the only person I bought the truck from. The police asked her who it was, and she said it was her soon-to-be ex-husband. They were going through a divorce. I pointed out that when I bought the truck, her husband's name was the only one on the title. The crazy lady yelled at me that he had originally bought it for her, and it was missing one day after she came home. All I could do was shrug and say I did not know that, but her husband was the legal owner before me, and I bought the truck from him. The police told her that I was correct, and it is legally my truck now. The lady went from crazy to just very sad, as she cried that it was her truck, and he sold it without her permission. I did feel sorry for the woman, and said to the police that they may want to do a wellness check on her or something. They said I was free to go, and they would handle the situation from there. When I was getting ready to leave, the crazy lady yelled that she was going to follow me and find out where I live, but the two officers did not let her do so. I left the parking lot and hightailed it on the highway out of there. I later contacted the guy who sold me the truck, and he admitted that the crazy lady is soon to be his ex-wife. She cheated on him for the second time, and it was the final nail in the coffin for their marriage. The truck was always in his name only, and that woman had signed a prenup when they married, so the divorce was not going in her favor. It has been months now, and that lady has not found me again. So I'm probably in the clear as long as I avoid the area I bought the truck in. Though for all I know, she's not even living there anymore since her husband divorced her. First of all, I'm so sorry that you're one of those who had their house destroyed due to the wildfires. I can't imagine how scary that must have been for you. But I have massive respect for you as there are many people who would be in your situation and give up on everything, thinking the world is against them. You picked yourself up and made sure that you were better prepared in case anything similar happened again. It sounds like you're actually making great progress since losing your initial house. As for the Karen encounter, I can't really wrap my head around why she would feel entitled to the truck that you've clearly bought. It sounds to me like she is the reason for the divorce and things aren't going the way she wants, so she's now reacting irrationally out of frustration. I'm glad you were able to disprove her lies, as it was obvious to the police that you were the owner of the truck after supplying them with your insurance and license. I hope you don't run into her again, and I also wish you the best in progressing towards your ideal life. Entitled male Karen yells at restaurant's owner, not realizing he was the owner, and gets kicked out along with his companions. This happened over the end of the summer in my hometown, a little city in central Mexico. First of all, two nights before this is happening, my city got hit by really strong winds. We hadn't seen anything like it before. The wind tore up some trees, billboards, fences, and in my house, it tore up a plastic dome we had in the middle of our roof. It was a hard night because we had a literal hole in the middle of the house and it was raining. We had to cover it up with a giant tent while also throwing out buckets of water off the lower floor and make sure nothing important got wet. After having spent the next day repairing and cleaning everything, my parents decided to relax for the weekend by going to eat to one of our favorite places. So we were in this restaurant. It was clear that it also got hit hard by the winds. The restaurant is basically a giant terrace, so it's pretty much outdoors inside the city. Upon entering, I noticed the owner on the floor next to the bar fixing some stuff. He was wearing working clothes and was full of grease and stuff. So if you didn't know him already, you would think he was a worker in the restaurant. He's pretty chill and kind, always greets regulars, and goes from table to table asking if everything is okay. The place is like casual fancy and one of the best in the city. This is when the entitled man, entitled mother, shows up. While we were eating, there was a blackout because workers of the electrical company were fixing a damaged power line nearby. So the TVs and the music went off. And this entitled man started whistling and screaming for the restaurant staff to do something. Then the owner approached him and said that they would fire up their backup generator and that please he be quiet in the meantime because it was no place to be causing a scene. The entitled man went ballistic because he thought a worker was shushing him. So, you know, the usual. He hit the owner with the classic, Do you know who I am? He was yelling and telling him that he knew the owner 
and that he was going to get him fired and the like. That he wanted to speak to the manager because he was paying a lot for the service being so bad. Obviously, him knowing the owner was a blatant lie because he was in front of him, just with working clothes. An entitled man was probably trying to show off because in his table there was another man and two visibly embarrassed women. The whole restaurant went quiet because most of the customers are regulars. My city is a popular vacation spot, so this is like a hidden restaurant that only locals know. I always saw the owner as a gentle giant because he's huge and pretty cool, but he got as red as a tomato and started yelling to the guy. I have never seen him do that. I'm roughly translating what the owner said. His choice of words were interesting. Spanish is such a beautiful language to tell someone to go frick themselves. He told Entitled Man that the place was his bloody restaurant, and Entitled Man was not welcome anymore, that he please pick up his companions and get the hell out of there. The owner told him that he didn't care a flying frick who he was, and that he didn't want his money. He just wanted him gone. Entitled Man was curled up in his seat being yelled at by this huge man. He stood up after that and quickly went to the exit, while yelling frick you when he was at a safe distance. When it was all over, the owner apologized to everyone in the restaurant and offered some free drinks and snacks. Like I said, he's a pretty cool guy. I don't blame the owner in the slightest for reacting the way he did. That guy was so rude. If anything, I'm surprised he managed to keep his cool and prevent himself from really going at him physically. I'm glad you were there to witness it and share it with us. It's crazy how people can be so mean to others just because they feel entitled to something. It wasn't anyone's fault the electricity went out, but this entitled rat had to be the only one to complain about it as he clearly lacks simple patience. I hope the owner remembers his face and never lets him in his restaurant again. This is a story when the Karen actually does know the manager and the owner. Hint, this doesn't end well. So this happened back in late November, and I only heard most of it secondhand. I work at a really nice Chinese-American dim sum restaurant in the city, and we have a strong following of regulars. One of these regulars is an old couple that have been coming to have tea and dim sum nearly religiously since we first opened and through the pandemic. Now, ever since we started asking for proof of vaccination plus ID because of city rules, the staff never actually asked these couple for theirs. That is until our newly hired front of house host asked them after discovering staff did not even ask them during their meal. And as you would guess it, these old regulars were not even vaccinated. When told they shouldn't be in the restaurant without vaccination, they threw a fit. Old Chinese Karen then threatened to call the manager and proceeded to call said manager's personal mobile. The manager was told that the old regulars were not vaccinated and was stuck in a quandary of having an extremely loyal, well-paying customer and the potential fines by the city should it ever be discovered. In the end, the manager told them that they could not return to eat without proof of vaccination. The old couple finished their food and announced quite vehemently that they would never return to the restaurant ever again. You'd think that would be the end of it. Guess again. Because the very next day, they showed up with their extended family, a group of 20 or so. Everyone except them had proof of vaccination. Old Chinese Karen proceeds to throw a fit when told she could not enter with the rest of the family, trying to guilt trip the host into letting them in. Unfortunately for her, our host is a veteran of the industry and is not at all intimidated by telling her the rules. Q calling the manager of which it is explained to her again that she cannot eat at the restaurant without proof of vaccination. At this point, everyone is quite done with this, and the family are going to send their parents back home via Uber. Before old Chinese Karen leaves, she proclaims that the host and the manager would rue the day for embarrassing her by calling the owner, and thus she does so, calling him and being told in no uncertain terms that she cannot eat there without proof of vaccination. Let us just say she was not at all happy with being told so. So all Karen could say was, we're never coming back here again. Well, let us just say that we know where she lives and that she still orders delivery from our restaurant to this day. I think it's pretty self-explanatory that if you aren't vaccinated, then most places wouldn't let you in, as it was a city-wide rule set by higher-ups and failure to follow these rules would result in massive fines. So regardless of how loyal a customer is, it isn't worth risking the fine to serve them, so I'm completely with your manager and owner on the situation. Karen needs to realize she isn't above the rules. If you enjoyed these stories, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Check out the other videos on your screen right now. Otherwise, you're definitely the jerk.